Hello, in today's video, we're going to be performing a block test on this Honda Civic. A block test is a way to test for combustion gases in your cooling system that could be mixed in there due to a bad head gasket, a warp set in their head surface, or even a crack in the cylinder head. I know many of you may be familiar with the major, more obvious cylinder head problems, the one where the symptoms include plumes of white smoke coming out the exhaust, which happened due to burning coolant, or the chocolate milk colored engine oil, which happened due to a possible cracked cylinder head, or a bad head gasket, causing it to mix the coolant with the engine oil, which this one has neither. But the reason I am performing this test is that the vehicle has been overheating lately and it's been losing coolant through the overflow, which is normally associated with too much pressure in the cooling system. And when this happens, the first thing you want to inspect is your radiator cap, looking for any damage to the rubber or broken or damaged springs. But this radiator cap is in good shape and holding pressure as it should. I've also made sure to bleed out any air in the system, which can also be a cause, but it still didn't help. So another possibility is that the combustion gases from the engine may be creating this excess pressure. One obvious sign that we have an issue is if I turn on this car for even a couple minutes, it'll create pressure in the cooling system, which shouldn't happen that fast, especially when it hasn't even reached operating temperature. And this right here is our block tester. It'll include a syringe of sorts and a liquid which will change color when it detects exhaust gases. And the way it works is we fill the syringe up to the indicated level and we will place it over the radiator where the cap would be or the coolant expansion tank on vehicles that don't have a cap on the radiator. For this Honda, I had to purchase this dual chambered unit due to the fact that my original one wouldn't fit on the radiator. Yet this newer dual chambered unit has a smaller end and does fit perfectly. The main difference being that this dual chambered unit is supposed to be more accurate, being that the lower chamber will filter out any particles that may create a false positive result. So on this one, we will fill both chambers up to the specified level, while on the single chambered block tester, we'll only have to fill one chamber to the fill line. What I do like is that this one comes with a hand pump that will pull air through manually before I would have had to connect it to either a vacuum pump or directly to an engine vacuum port. Anyways, to get started, the first thing you'll want to do is remove the radiator cap so you'll want the engine cold and depressurized so it can be removed safely. We will also want the coolant level to be low enough to not pull it through the block tester. So if it's to the top, you will need to remove some, otherwise when pulling vacuum through the tester, it may pull coolant through as well, ruining our test. So now that we know our coolant level is low enough, we'll now want to turn on the car, leaving it on for a while till it warms up. The reason you want it to warm up is that we want the coolant to be circulating throughout the engine. If we do this when it's cold, the thermostat remains closed, thus preventing the coolant from circulating so it may not work as well. Once it's warmed up, we can place the block tester on the radiator like so. At this point, we can begin pumping the hand pump. This will begin pulling any cooling vapors through the block tester. And if we got a problem where combustion gases are getting into the cooling system, these gases that are being pulled into the syringe will mix with this fluid, in theory changing the color to yellow if severe enough. Now depending if it's not so bad yet, then the change may be barely noticeable. I do also rev up the engine to try to get the water pump to circulate the coolant better. But during this test, I'm not getting much of a change. Or was there? I guess if I compare it to the original color, it did change to a dark green from blue. So we may have a small problem here, but it's nothing obvious. Let me show you what would happen if we added cooling back into the radiator and left the level pretty high. Now when we pump it, you see it begins pulling coolant into the chamber and this is not what we want to happen. So this is why we want the level to be low enough. Now let's try something for fun. If we were to add new fluid, 
and do this at the exhaust pipe exit while the car is running, it should change to an obvious yellow. Which if you'll notice is slowly beginning to change color. So if you end up getting something this color, then you know you got a lot of combustion gases being introduced into your cooling system and a definite problem. But as for me with these results, nothing definitive, but I do got another test that may confirm if it's a head gasket issue, so that'll be coming soon. Well that'll do it for this video. I hope you were able to find this video helpful or informative. If so, please click that thumbs up button to support my video and my channel. And please subscribe if you haven't done so.